Today we're talking with Black Pigeon Speaks. Black Pigeon Speaks, he has a YouTube channel which shares alternative views on politics, society, and culture. Thank you so much for joining us, Black Pigeon. Why, it's a pleasure, ladies. Thank you for having me. Uh, one of your most controversial videos is called Why Women Destroy Nations. Um, what motivated you to create that video? What motivated me to create that video? Uh, that's a good question. I guess it's probably from the years of just uh, just examining the fairer sex and watching the way most women in my life and in general, I guess, be have behaved. Um, I guess what really motivated me was watching the migrant crisis of 2015 and seeing the train stations that were being overrun by ladies in... Uh, in Europe with placards reading refugees welcome we love you and 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 mm -hmm. actually clapping and squealing and they looked like you know that they were they were sort of entranced like teenage girls to a to a boy band um it was it was just mind numbing watching because the the inevitable conclusions and and the inevitable outcomes of hordes of men coming in from the middle east because i have lived in the middle east and i know a little bit about uh, the the sexualized culture of the Middle East, or lack thereof. Uh, I knew exactly what was going to happen. It only took a couple of months, and you had Cologne. I mean, obviously, you had mm -hmm. probably random incidences here and there, and just watching that, and just just how um, women are are basically, unfortunately, um, they, they they behave in a different way than men do, and and to say that we are evolved equally and we are of equal faculty and of equal um, instinct is is absolutely not true. So I guess it was just a combination of watching uh, the way women were behaving during the crisis, which is what motivated me to, to make it because it was just, I was just stupefied by, by these things. And then the other thing would be just because the fact that women are able and capable of doing this is, is a very clear visual reminder of how having women been enfranchised, women being given the vote, has completely moved our societies over to the left. Uh, if, if there was a center previously, previous to women being enfranchised, that center now has moved inextricably to the left. So, um, and, and another thing, as much as women don't want to admit it, women are, are a resource. You know, women... Um, I mean, it, it's a horrible thing to say, but well, the you know, same women, could be said about been, men, really. But okay. <laughs> yeah, but 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 men, I don't. I can't think of any time women fighting over, you know, battles over men. I mean, think about the found, the yeah, founding okay. of the Ro of of the city of Rome. It's based on the rape of the Sabine women, and and stealing all their women. I mean, throughout history, women are the ones. You know, a, a fertile woman is a valuable commodity. Without women, right. you don't. Yeah, have I mean, babies, I, you don't I think it's bad to say that um, men guard women as though they are a resource. I can, I can agree with you. Yes, that one. yes, <laughs> yes. I know. I mean, I, I don't want to get too, 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 too much into that, to be honest. But yeah, it's it's generally the condi continuity between generations that are created by women, and uh, and honestly, I don't think women are generally capable. Of, of making sound political decisions and the migrant crisis was probably the reason that came up that video yeah. just watching and, it and when, I, when that video came out I actually responded to it and I said um, well there's only for me when I look at the statistics I'm only seeing like a 5% difference in the number of women voting left and right you know um, so that I still wonder about this one you know I still I'm still, okay. I'm open-minded to this concept that maybe women shouldn't vote because they. But you're talking, women. but you're talking about countries where where five percent where somewhere like like the UK or Canada yeah. or, yeah, or Germany. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but but the Conservative Party in any in the, in any normal society, I mean, Conservative parties in countries like the UK and Canada are not conservative. Therefore, all the things that the left are, it, it's just a little less. That's right. all. So Therefore, it's like the welfare political... state. Therefore, the. You know, the, the only catering to women kind of thing, which is making them. Yeah, they're all they're, right. they're all catering to women. So I mean, <laughs> if you do it by voting, I mean that's 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 ridiculous, <laughs> because there is no there is no conservative parties in the in the Western world. On that unfortunate note of Black Pigeon speaks not making the fine and necessary distinction 
between there is and there are, with the copula agreeing with the subject, not the dummy subject there, but uh, parties. There are parties, not there is. I will uh, proceed with the actual content of the video. Uh, pardon me, I do lament the loss of the distinction between there is and there are. It is very lamentable indeed, but something that has uh, been pushed through and driven through by contemporary English-speaking culture. More's the pity. Uh, related to the topic at hand, of course, is the question of women. And that was an excerpt from a discussion that the uh, infamous or famous or well-known or well-recognized Black Pigeon Speaks had had with uh, two women, uh, Tara McCarthy, i.e. Reality Calls, and her collaborator, uh, P Patterbone, M Mrs. Patterbone. I don't know the name exactly. I think it's mentioned in the, in the discussion. Uh, this was a few months ago. Now, there are a couple of issues I want to talk about in this video, but I want to bring to your attention the degree of discomfort uh, both parties involved, both the vaginally endowed and the penilely endowed, had with this uh, topic. Uh, Black Pigeon Speaks himself confesses that he doesn't really want to go into it very much more. And despite his most famous video being a video entitled why Women Destroy Civilization, which I suppose was based very much on independent observation, but things that had been noted down and observed in MGTOW circles and MGTOW video commentary um, years prior, that he didn't really want to go into it despite that. Now, I want to talk about this issue, the notion of women voting in society at large, but also in academia, because uh, Sargon of Akkad, the uh, most munificent and generous Sargon of Akkad allowed somebody named the Britisher not too long ago, about a week or two ago, to post a video on his channel uh, whereby he suggested, this Britisher chap, that women should be essentially, essentially shunted out of universities and there should be room made for men. Now, I want to get to that a bit later, but I first want to cover the uh, political aspect of things. So I, that was just a snippet. The conversation goes on, and it doesn't. It's not it, the entirety of the discussion is not just on this, you know, women uh, voting or or not voting. It goes uh, it goes well beyond that. Um, but I happen to be on the fence on the issue of whether or not uh, women getting the vote was as exceptionally consequential as is often claimed. <clears throat> For a long time. I had uh, been a firm believer that women getting the vote uh, led to many of the destructive policies we have in place. Uh, but I watched a video of Coltane's, which he sort of vehemently argued against the case. And whilst his video did not uh, dissuade me entirely of the persuasion that it is a distinct possibility that women's uh, enfranchisement led to many of the destructive policies we have on hand right now, it... Um, it nonetheless swung me to a much more middle ground on the position. Um, and I'll give you the reasons why. And this is the issue at hand, I think, which will you will see will pop up when I address the issue, uh, the issues that Britisher uh, in his video on women in academia and the sciences brought up. And I will be linking uh, to both of these uh, videos in the low bar so you have a reference point. Many people have observed... Uh, I think Girl writes what was um, one of the first uh, people to observe it, uh, the phenomenon of uh, female hypoagency. Now, I don't want to uh, you know, tout my own horn, but I did, to the best of my knowledge, coin the term hypoagency. Uh, that is the word. It's a neologism, obviously, and it's, um, well, the, the, the preposition being hypo as opposed to hyper from the Greek. The idea that Women exert agency, but they are hypo agents in the sense that most, in sense that most of their agency is projected and, and uh, acted out uh, by way of men, as opposed to they themselves doing the acting. And this was, of course, the main thrust of that video of Coltane's a while back. The idea that sort of the tender years doctrine and what have you, things like this, uh, long before women had been uh, given the right to vote, that many things were in place to uh, push things in this direction regardless. And one of the reasons why I tend to at least agree in this sense is that 
many of the things you see in everyday life regarding women's and men's interaction really comes down to men doing stuff for women. Uh, women exerting their hypo agency and men exerting their hyper agency. A classic example of this, I would say, is the the nagging wife. Now, the nagging wife, uh, in I suppose in some abstract legal sense, she has a right to nag her husband to do certain things, but not really. The reality is, it is a in theory a personal relationship between the the vaginally and the penially endowed, and. Uh, the fact that the man does anything on account of her nagging, which probably is an evolutionary function, that is female nagging, um, is, 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 has nothing to do with politics. It's just a woman exerting her agency or her hypo-agency vis-a-vis the man. Now, there are um, some interesting things uh, to observe regarding this because that's a very minor example. Though. So the man will mow the lawn or take her shopping or whatever. Um, but you see this, and some people call it white knighting. I think it's just a function of, um, of reproduction uh, across the board. So whilst it's true that women have the vote when a lot of these strange policies that seem to color our age and, and we take for granted, like no-fault divorce and um, a corrupt court system came into place, uh, it was men who actually put it into place, uh, the, the policy, say, of no-fault divorce and other policies that have been to the, uh, well, the degradation of, of basically male identity within Western society. Women might have wanted it, um, but, and they might have even voted in a sense for it, in, as in putting in place politicians or establishing politicians who would agree with them, but, but men acquiesced and gave them the uh, the green light in order to follow through with it. Now, once again, this is an issue of essentially of the kind of, of the woman nagging the husband, although this is on a societal level, women nagging men in positions of government, influence, and power to do certain things on their, be, uh, on their behalf. Now, this was done at their behest, but they did not necessarily vote this in. And this is why, it's just one example, say no fault of course, why I'm not a, um, why I do not believe with absolute certitude that, that the, the right to vote was as consequential as some believe it to be, including Black Pigeon Speaks. Uh, I think it's a bit simplified and we that doesn't take into account our naturally gynocentric uh, worldview and indeed tendencies and instincts. Gynocentrism here uh, being defined as uh, the natural tendency to placate and to uh, appease the limiting factor in reproduction, i.e. women. So uh, this is a, a point of debate, but there's no doubt that women's involvement in politics has been largely destructive. I always find it uh, interesting um, that uh, this is a kind of a sacred cow for many people that uh, political empowerment, all these things are really great. And uh, I guess it really depends on your perspective. As far as the long-term view is concerned, women really don't have that. Women live much more in the here and now than men do. This is, of course, evidenced by their reactions to breakups, marriages, etc. They move from one moment to another. This has been discussed at length in, in various uh, talks I've had and, and, and videos uh, monologues where we talk. I've talked about uh, the nature of the film, the clip from the film, and they move on. I mean, this is a general mentality. This, of course, in turn can be applied to society at large, which is to say women don't really, generally speaking, have a concept of, uh, of the greater consequences of their actions. They are, as it's sometimes claimed, empathetic and emotional. And they think only of the immediate potential good that an action might uh, bring with it, but uh, they don't really think of the large, larger scale consequences, which I think is what uh, Black Vision Speaks was trying to get at here uh, for the, in the case of uh, mass immigration in Europe. Now, this is a solid observation, and it's been observed by me and many others for years now. And 
what I want to get at here is the degree of discomfort the interlocutors had with each other in addressing this subject. And so anyone who wants to talk about, because I'm going to be getting to the Britisher and its proposal for ac academia in a bit, but anyone who wants to talk about this specific issue with women will find themselves to be in quite the conundrum, which is to say there will be a degree of uh, discomfort. Maybe I wouldn't feel that discomfort because I'm so accustomed to talking about these things. However, people are in kind of a bind. And let's just move on uh, now to, and I'll, this will be, this topic will now be sort of interlaced with the topic of women in academia. The proposals made by the British, I would strongly uh, urge you to watch that video. It's not Sargon's, but it is on his channel. Strange that he permitted that video even to be there, given his politics, but still interesting. The, the, the main thrust of the Britisher's argument is that, um, you know, on a, on, a, on a bell curve, IQ bell curve, there are more male geniuses, more male idiots, hence you're more likely to get scientific genius in men. That's almost certainly true. And so you should just have male quotas. And the, the commenters in the audience thought, no, 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 we need egalitarianism. Now, in this particular instance, I would agree. I think that a meritocracy would be better, um, even though it can sometimes, even that can produce questionable results. Uh, you don't want to exclude the entirety of wenchdom, uh, sorry, womankind, from uh, from academia, because there will be the occasional, the very occasional, uh, really smart person. Comes to mind uh, a an 18th century uh, polymath, Maria Gaetana Agnesi, Italian, um, who was just uh, exceptional. Apparently, she she had 20 different siblings, and uh, you know the way. <laughs> I guess you could call this genetic drift. The way things just work out, she turned out to be very intelligent. Uh, she had mastered seven languages um, by uh, the age of 11, I, I recall. But more importantly, because that's not too uncommon for women, she uh, she worked with calculus and, and complicated mathematics. And she was a member of, but never taught, the faculty of the University of Bologna. Now, I should also point out that despite, uh, despite uh, Maria Gaetana's Agnesi's uh, capacious mind, uh, in her later years, the final few decades of her life, she devoted her time to charitable work, uh, charity, working with the church, the Catholic church, and the poor. So kind of a typically female thing. Um, and I think this is very uh, very interesting and demonstrable in a sense, or demonstrative, demonstrative rather, because it shows that even in the cases where women are uniquely endowed with uh, superior cognitive abilities. I mean, there's no doubt that Maria Caetana Agnesi, I'll, I'll post a link to her biography if you're interested, um, was a was a far more brilliant than I am or, or most YouTubers. But I think the difference between her and some comparable male mind is that the drivers are not there. And this is an issue not really talked about in the video by uh, the Britisher, but... Uh, it's entirely possible, although there are fewer of them, to, to get women with an IQ or, or intelligence level approaching that of, of a man of similar capacity. I mean, there, there are women with IQs, 150 occasionally. And, uh, and I, I, anecdotally, actually, in, in reference to this, remember some story of some woman with a, a, a comparably high IQ who merely used it to find a, a smart husband. And this is the point. Women have no real gain in pursuing achievement reproductively. Men don't care about that. Men care about tits and ass and, well, essentially getting along uh, with the female. Can they get along with them? So whatever uh, achievement they might uh, produce, whatever accomplishment they, they might bring to the fore, it, it, there's just not much, much motiv reproductive motivation for that. Hence my own theory as to why uh, Maria Gaetana Agnesi decided to retire from her scientific mathematical endeavors and um, and go just go back to studying the Bible and and uh, being uh, being essentially a, a, a charity worker. Uh, it's claimed that she uh, wrote the first book, 
that discussed uh, differential in an integral calculus. Maybe that's true. In fact, it probably is, but still. The ambition wasn't there. So even in the cases where, and this is this touches really on the heart of the issue that the British had brought up, even in the cases where you, you get women who are very intelligent, well-endowed cognitively, um, there are going to be different reproductive motivations behind it that are ultimately going to be responsible for the decisions they take in life, uh, both in well in the, at the nonce and then later on. So this is this is I think the the issue that wasn't really touched on. So I agree that you should ideally allow capable women, uh, as the audience of Sargons, uh, in, into university and what have you. But the reproductive decisions they make have long-standing consequences. I talked about this quite a bit in A Conflict of Moral Interest, a video I produced last year where I talked about the, I guess, the fairness versus justice-seeking models, the different sex-based moralities that have evolved. And, for example, example of, of women not really taking into account the big picture, the idea of a kind of self-entitlement. I mean, in some sense, women do act like children oftentimes. They are not children, but they act like it in the sense of uh, paid maternity leave, maternity leave state-sponsored paid maternity leave, or demanded, which is to say uh, companies operating in a certain state will have to do this, or, or a certain country. And this is seen as a right, uh, with not a shred of evidence offered as to what the economic benefit is. It's only beneficial to the individual woman making a, cho- a choice to reproduce, but it, there's no obvious economic benefit to companies Certainly not, because they're just wasting resources on an absentee worker, uh, and certainly not as a society at large. But this is where it gets tricky, and we get back to the original point of women, women's hypoagency. The, the point I'm making here is that whether the vote is the big issue or, or, or having male quotas or not, society will find a way to count out to women's uh, desires uh, without offering a without women offering a a scrap of evidence to to prove their positions uh, or the, the value of their positions more specifically, so it's obviously valuable to a woman who decides to reproduce for half a year to essentially to stay home and to suckle her uh, her sucklings, uh, but and get paid to do it effectively. But that's not of benefit to a company. In fact, it's 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 patently not of benefit to the company, and and of doubtful benefit to uh, the society into which that company somehow uh, fits. I think that's pretty obvious. But uh, I doubt you would get a quote unquote egalitarian like Sargon of Akkad to say, no, you should get rid of paid maternity leave. Well, maybe he would. I don't think he would, um, because it you know it's a life choice. Blah 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 blah. Maybe he would. I don't think so, though. And ma- most men would 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 concede that it, it, it it's a good thing for women to be able to have this once again without a shred of evidence to uh, to prove that this is actually a uh, fortunate uh, setup for the for both companies and society at large. So basically, what you're going to have, even if you were to have this quota system that the British had suggested is a lot of hypo-agency going around. This has always been the case. Women getting men to do stuff for them. Women don't need actual political power for that. Um, and they certainly don't need uh, the... Well, they, they don't They don't need that in the case of a place like a university where they can just sort of get on the internet and, and complain. Other thing is... If, let's say, this were the case, you had some ideal situation, maybe not the quota system that the Britisher had suggested, but instead a system where the weak were naturally weeded out, as it were, say in STEM, uh, there would be a paucity, a dearth of women, comparatively speaking. And, and so how many people would be able to stomach that and countenance that? And it would be a matter of time until some women complained. And women when the board consensus probably would chime in and say, yeah, well, that's terrible. We, you know, just for the sake of appearance, and we need diversity for the sake of diversity. Well, we need more women for the sake of having more women, which is the status quo now. Uh, I just, I'm not very hopeful that any system could work. As long as we favor women's often 
vain and grandiose desires for themselves and more importantly for the workings of society, uh, it doesn't matter whether or not they're politically enfranchised or not. It doesn't matter what system you have set up at universities. They will get, uh, vis-a-vis their hypoagency, men to do the work for them. And men uh, who, generally speaking, love women uh, will do whatever women want them to because it's to their reproductive advantage to do so. Uh, Effectively, kowtowing to women's uh, wishes is to their reproductive advantage. And this is why you see in a lot of traditional uh, setups, or at least niches on on the internet, be it the alt-right or or alt-light or, well, maybe less alt-light, uh, just more sort of conservative or traditional stuff, these people need to walk a really thin line because they need to curry the favor of women on the one hand, but and, but they also need to have a realistic and honest assessment of female nature. And this often falls on deaf ears, and sometimes it pushes them away. Uh, in fact, um, I remember that article that Barbarossa had read years ago about some white woman complaining about, quote-unquote, you know, white, white men in the outright uh, who are just complaining too much. So it's it's a very, for these people who are trying to, and make no mistake, I've said this before publicly on Millennia Woe's channel, uh, I think the alt-right and many of these organizations are just kind of reproductive movements. So you need to curry the favor of women. And that is, uh, is a difficult thing if you want to be honest, because what, what, what Black Pigeon Speaks was saying was not particularly flattering towards women uh, specifically there, the women specifically there, but also more generally... So this is a real challenge, and also a challenge to the egalitarian view. I mean, uh, human nature, unless we fundamentally re-engineer ourselves, a video I am kind of working on slowly but surely, uh, will not change. And so hypoagency will be the thing for years to come, and that will be how things get done. Uh, No politics needed. So did the vote help? Not really. Was it essential? Probably not really either. And it doesn't matter if you had this, this, this quota system. It would be just a matter of time until women got their feels and it felt wrong and something would be implemented against it and then radically change. And we are then back to status quo. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to cover this subject for a while. Um, just the, the, I guess the stars aligned today, so I was able to get around to it. And I will check you out, hopefully in the not-too-distant future, assuming I'm alive. So you take care. Bye-bye, and may the gods watch over you. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.